Shipmates and Devil Dogs, GHS, is a standardized way of doing business. They have adopted this concept throughout the world. It will take a little bit of getting used to, but we can do it. Begin training your sailors and marines on the new SDS and labeling for hazardous material. You need to introduce the topic to your men and women now. There is a requirement to have all workers exposed to hazardous material trained on GHS by 1 December 2013. Keep in mind, when a new chemical is introduced to your workers, make sure they are trained on the hazards associated with those chemicals. Make sure you provide the proper PPE to your employees. Review the SDS sheets for physical, health, and even environmental hazards. The program should be fully implemented by 1 June 2016. So get on the ball and begin familiarizing yourself. Stand by for the video, pay attention, and you'll have a good idea of what GHS is. No, it's not getting home safely, but I like that. Enjoy the video and see you in the fleet. Hello, I'm Cindy Chester, our specialist at the Naval Safety Center. This video is intended for training purposes. The video will introduce you to the globally harmonized system, better known as GHS, that OSHA has adopted with the hazard communication standard. The video is used for train the trainer information that they can disseminate to the workers that may be exposed to hazardous material. The GHS system is going to be used for labeling and also the MSDS sheets will be replaced with the SDS sheets. Hey, what's up? Oh, nothing much. What are you doing? Nothing. I'm just outside of work, walking around. Pretty bored. Hey, have you heard of this GHS thing? No, what is that? I, I don't know, like people at the command keep talking about it and I just want to know if you've ever heard of it, you know? No, do you know what it stands for? Dude, my guess would probably be like, get home safe. Because it's, it's got something to do with the safety thing again. Oh, I have no idea. I haven't heard anybody ever talk about it. Me either. Well, I mean, actually, what it stands for, so. I don't know. Who was talking about it? Like chiefs and first classes and you know people around the command no big deal oh maybe you should ask one of them if they know what it is okay you're right i'm gonna go ask somebody hey what's up oh not much i was a. Uh, I just had a question for you uh, you heard about this ghs thing mm, what it's this ghs i heard it's like a new Motor T acronym. What's it even stand for then? I don't know, I think it stands for like Gear Hub System. Gear Hub System? I don't know. Um, ask somebody about it, I guess. I don't know. All right, I'll go ask somebody. All right. All right, guys, hold up, hold up. I'm going to use Armor K. Let's go over to the classroom so you're not putting out any bad gouge on the GHS. Hazard communication standard for general industry before GHS requires an employer to have a written hazard communication program, have each hazardous chemical in the workplace labeled, have a material safety data sheet, MSDS, for each hazardous chemical in the workplace, train his or her employees about the hazards associated with and precautionary measures required for each hazardous chemical. How does GHS change hazard communication in my installation? Hazard classification, rather than hazard determination. Safety data sheet, rather than material safety data sheet, uses a 16 section format. Labels are more defined with specific requirements. What are GHS hazards? The categories of the hazards are physical, health, environmental, and we're gonna list these up on the board. GHS physical hazards are included below. Explosives, flammable gases, flammable aerosols, oxidizing gases, gases under pressure, flammable liquids, flammable solids, self-reactive substances, and pyrophoric liquids. GHS physical hazards continued are listed as pyrophoric solids, self-heating substances, sub substances which in contact with water emit flammable gases, oxidizing liquids, 
oxidizing solids, organic peroxides, and corrosive to metals. Now we're going to take a look at some health hazards. GHS health hazards, acute toxicity, skin corrosion, irritation, serious eye damage, eye irritation, respiratory or skin sensitization, sensitization, continuing, reproductive toxicology, target organ toxicity, single exposure and repeated, and aspiration toxicity. Okay, over here we're going to talk about some of the environmental hazards. Hazardous to the aquatic environment, acute aquatic toxicity, chronic aquatic toxicity, bioaccumulation potential, and rapid degradability. Here we have an example of an SDS and how it's going to look, and this is going to be the standard format. From here, I'm going to hand it over to Gunnery Sergeant McKay, and he's going to continue on with some of the labeling and identification. All right, so the product, so the label elements, we've got the product identifier, the supplier identifier, chemical identity, the hazard pictograms, signal words, hazard statements, precautionary information. Three elements with the stars, those are required, they're going to be on every label. For signal words, only two words are authorized, danger or warning which are used to inform the chemical user of the severity of the hazards of the chemical. Now we're going to talk about hazard statements. These include appropriate statements for each GHS hazard on labels for products possessing more than one hazard. And here are some examples of required hazard statements. So we're going to keep away from fire, sparks, and heated surfaces. Do not use in areas without adequate ventilation. Use CO2, dry chemical, or foam for fighting fires. Wear safety goggles and gloves. The GHS standardized the pictograms that can be used to describe the hazards of chemicals. Okay folks, this is important information. I need you to pay attention. These are the nine standardized pictograms from the GHS that are authorized to be used on the hazard communication labels. And now we're going to go over them. The exclamation mark is for irritant, skin or eye, skin sensitizer, acute toxicity, which is harmful, narcotic effects, respiratory tract irritant, Hazards to, hazardous to ozone layer, non-mandatory. Now we're going to look at health hazard. The health hazard pictogram will be used to warn the user that the chemical may have health effects or hazards that could affect the respiratory tract. Most of us are already familiar with this pictogram. This symbol is used to identify flammables. This pictogram, the gas cylinder, indicates gases are under pressure. These include cylinders, propane tanks, natural gas tanks, and refrigerated gaseous liquids. The next pictogram, which is for corrosion, is used to warn that the chemical contains skin corrosives that may cause permanent eye and skin damage. This pictogram you're going to recognize if you're in the ordnance community. This one is used to make it easier to aware that this is an explosive. This pictogram, the flame over a circle, is used when we have oxidizing gases, liquids, or solids. The skull and crossbones is for acute toxicity. This warning label informs the user that the toxicity effects could likely result in fatality. This is the environment warning label, which is used to inform the user that the chemical proposes a hazard to aquatic life. This is how you're going to see the pictograms appear on the labels. You'll see the pictograms on the label, so look for precautionary statements to inform the employee on the hazards associated with the use of the chemical. So the product identifier gives the name or number used for a hazardous product. The name, address, and telephone number should be on the label, so if you need to contact them for additional clarification, you have that information available on the label. There may be additional information supplied on the label, and that should appear at the bottom of the label, such as CSDS for more information. So we have to train our sailors, marines, civilian employees that work with hazardous material on the new GHS system. Let them know that the MSDS sheet will begin to have a new look and they're going to be called SDS. Show them the examples of the new labels and the pictograms. This training has to take place now. By December 1, 2013, all marines, sailors, DOD, civilians and contractors have to be trained up in this system to meet the requirements of the hazard communication standard.
Question one. The best answer for question one is A, the globally harmonized system, also referred to as the Purple Book. It's the system used for classifying and labeling hazardous material. And now to question two. Question two. The best answer for question two is C, safety data sheets. Safety data sheets will replace the MSDS sheets. It's a 16 section format that is standardized throughout. And now for question three. Question three, the best answer is D. There are nine pictograms appearing here on the screen. And now for question four. Question four. The best answer is A, danger and warning. That's it. And now for question five. And now question five, the best answer is B, physical, health, and environmental. And keep in mind, environmental is not mandatory. This concludes the quiz. This concludes the video, and we hope that you all got all the answers right on the quiz.